Hello and welcome. A few years ago, I was chatting with Mike Hayton, one of our local geologists at the Blues Bar over a pint, and he was telling me about a rather inconspicuous rock located here in Harrogate's Valley Gardens that might be slightly more significant than the dog walkers passing by realise. At first, I thought he was barking mad, but it turns out that this tree stump is around 320 million years old. That's five times the age of T-Rex. The dinosaur, not the band, of course. I was left pining for answers, and after a few years of digging, I think I've come to the root of it. Now, I pretend to be a historian, but a geologist, I certainly am not. So for this one, I've branched out and called in the big guns. This is Professor Colin Waters, Vice President of the Yorkshire Geological Society, and one of the foremost experts in the Carboniferous period. And what he thinks we found could be one of the most significant discoveries in Harrogate ever. Professor, first of all, thank you so much for coming and joining us it's my today. pleasure. Would you be so kind as to explain, as you would to a small child, or perhaps a Labrador, <laughs> what this is and why it's so significant? So, we have here um, the, the stem, really, of a, a tree, a tree trunk, mm. um, but one that's really old, uh, probably about 320 to 330 million years old. It's uh, not like the trees you see now, looking around the park here. Mm. We've obviously got these trees. These have only evolved in the last 100 million years or so. This is 320 million years old, so this goes way before the dinosaurs. It's a time where um, probably the most evolved species we had on the planet would be amphibians and reptiles, but not, not dinosaurs. These, these are very simple reptiles. This, this trunk um, is part of a, a tree which is, probably could have grown to tens of meters in height, mm. so similar to the trees we're seeing around us, but these are not the sort of species we recognize today. Mm. These have only evolved in the last 100 million years or so. You've got to imagine this is, this is not simply an area of, of ground like we're seeing here. It would have been a cold swamp, so it'd be wet most of the year. It's a bit like the cypress forest that you get in the Everglades okay. uh, in the present day. Um, so most of the time, there would be water lapping around our, our ankles at present. And so any of the, the leaf material and stems falling into the water would get preserved and that forms a peat and that peat develops over time and gets compressed to form a coal. Um, Hence so carboniferous. Carboniferous period. is, yes, the name of the, the period. Um, but the trunks themselves tend not to get preserved very well. The only times you would normally find these are within things like um, uh, sandstones in the millstone grit. Mm. Those, those were, they were former rivers that were flowing through and as it flooded through, it would rip out the trees and carry them in, in the water and then they get deposited in the sand. And you do see trunks lying, but they're always no, not in situ, they've been transported. But to actually see one like this sitting in place is very rare. Now, obviously, this one hasn't, this has been moved here, this is not in yeah. place, but it was found growing like this wow. in, in the rock. Now, to do this, um, you know, you imagine that, that, that normally sediments accumulate quite slowly yeah. with time, and as a result, the trunk itself would rot um, and not get preserved. So to get preserved like this means it, there had to be been a flood of material around it that, that protected it. Uh, and it's likely to be, uh, uh, again, a river flowing through and just mm. burying the tree, at least up to this height, if not higher. Um, and then over, over a short period of time, obviously the tree, which is made of woody material, um, will start to degrade mm. and the sand will start to fall in into the gap that's been created. So this is in effect a cast of the original tree. So it's not the tree, you know, there's no carbon in here. Right. This is just sandstone, but it's preserving the texture yes. of that former tree. So we experienced some sort of uh, aerobic decomposition. So yes, so it's the fact that the, the lack of oxygen in, in the sediment itself. No way to carbon date it. Or no, 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 like no, 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 certainly not. This is, this is you can see on here, there's yeah. little uh, grains of quartz in here. This is the sandstone. This was a tropical forest at the time. We were near the equator back 320 million years ago. In, in the old days, um, when they were mining, uh, particularly hand mining mm. uh, in, the, in the, the coal seams in, in, the, in the Pennines, uh, quite often they did come across these growing in position um, and sometimes they would be then uh, put on display. So again in Bradford, I think there's an example, which is more of the root systems uh, are on display there and were found in a mine in the, in the area. So, but um, no, it's, not, it's not something that I've seen very often in my career. However, how this petrified tree came to be in the Valley Gardens remains a mystery. This photograph was taken in the early 20th century in the Montpellier Gardens, what would later be demolished to make way for our weather spoons. Here it describes how a fossil tree, probably discovered at Scargill Reservoir when it was dug out, was moved into the gardens. And that all makes sense. Scargill Reservoir was dug out in 1902, so more than likely one of the workers recognised what it was and it was subsequently moved into the gardens and then eventually to the Valley Gardens here. 
And then it was forgotten about, quite literally lost to time. You might ask, why didn't they put a plaque on it? Well, the Victorians didn't really do plaques. If you went to a museum a hundred years ago and you didn't know what you're looking at, then you weren't supposed to be in the museum. They're a very snobby bunch. So until our local geologist, Mike, clearly recognized what it was, alerted me to it, and I subsequently got in touch with the professor who we've just heard from, after a hundred years, we have rediscovered this 320 million year old tree which I think is pretty cool. But that wouldn't be the last discovery that we'd make. Just as we were about to leave, I asked the professor to come and look at another rock that I had noticed after six years of wandering around the Valley Gardens on tours. He came and examined it, and it turns out that this too is another petrified tree stump, one that we genuinely had no recollection of. So maybe they discovered two up at the reservoir and brought them both down, or perhaps this one has always been in situ, and when they built the path around it, it was too cumbersome for the Victorian engineers to move. Harrogate's heyday has come in the last two, three hundred years. If you came here six hundred years ago, you would just find a small collection of farms and not much going on. York and Knaresborough are the really important places. However, it now turns out that we don't just have a history going back a few hundred years, but one going back 320 million years. 